Hello and welcome, my name's Arcadian, the number one dumpster tier gamer. We are in it today, we are starting our new Let's Play series, coming off the back end of Starfield's Let's Play, which I finished recording earlier this week. Uh, we are now heading back into one of my favorite games, The Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Now, if you don't know about me, I have put over 10,000 hours into Skyrim uh, across all the different uh, consoles and devices that I've had it on. Um, so I consider myself fairly well an expert. Uh, so today we are going on a fresh install of Skyrim uh, with the only mods loaded in are the Creation Club mods. Uh, so we are not running, we're running a fresh install with zero mods besides the creation club information. That's all stuff that you can get through the anniversary edition uh, Skyrim. So all of these will be put in. However, they are, we may not use them all, but they all are in the game. Uh, so <clears throat> with that being said, we're going to load up a new character and go about playing Skyrim. And as every new character should start, we're gonna wake up in a wagon. the border, right? You walked right into that Imperial ambush. Same as us. And that thief over there. Thief? Damn you Stormcloaks. Skyrim was fine until you came along. The Empire was nice and lazy. If they hadn't been looking for you, they'd have stolen that horse and been halfway to Hammerfell. Doesn't sound like a good excuse. You and me, we shouldn't be here. It's these Stormcloaks the Empire wants. Well, We're I shouldn't be here. And sisters in vines now. Shut up back there. What's wrong with him, huh? Watch your tongue. You're speaking to Ulfric Stormcloak, the true High King. Ulfric? The Jarl of Windhelm? You're the leader of the rebellion. But they captured you. Oh, God. Where are they taking us? I don't know where we're going. But Sovereign Guard awaits. Wait, they're gonna kill us? This can't be happening. This isn't happening. Hey. What village are you from, horse thief? Why do you care? A Nord's last thoughts should be your home. Rorikstead. I'm... I'm from Rorikstead. What are you doing all the way over here by Helkin? Good. Let's get this over with. Sure. Marv, Nabella, Kinnereth, Akatosh, the Vines, please help me. General Tully is the military governor, and it looks like the Dalmor are with him. Damn elves. I bet they had something to do with this. What do you have against elves, sir? This is Helgen. I used to be sweet on the curve from here. I wonder if Vilod is still making that mead with juniper berries. When I was a boy, imperial walls and towers used to make me feel at ease. Why 
mighty thing. End of the line. Let's go. Shouldn't keep the gods waiting for us. No, wait! We're not rebels! Face your death with some courage, thief. You've got to tell them! We weren't with you! This is a mistake! Get towards the block when we call your name. One at a time! Empire loves their damn lists. Ulfric Stormcloak, Jarl of Windhelm. It has been an honor, Jarl Ulfric. Raylof of Riverwood. Lokir of Rorikstad. No, I'm not a rebel! You can't do this! Halt! You're not gonna kill me! Archers! Anyone else feel like running? Wait. You there. Step forward. Who are you? Okay. So, let's go over this real fast. Uh, the character that we are creating today is going to be based off of Konharik, uh, which is the dragon priest whose name means warlord. Uh, give me one second, I've got the information here. So, this plays off of a specific... Um, a specific fan base theory. And that theory is that Shalador, the mage who created the College of Winterhold in Labyrinthian, was originally Konharik. Uh, however, Konharik was um, betrayed by the other dragon priests, uh, whether it be an attempt to steal his power or because he started to get regrets or what be, whatever it be. Uh, Konharik was stripped of his powers, uh, and then the uh, the dragon priest sealed away his mask with their 13 masks, which explains the little uh, mask thing in Labyrinthian. Once you've collected all 13 masks, then you can turn the, or put them into the pedestals and be able to retrieve Konharik's mask. So, <clears throat> this build, ba or the basis of this build is very much dependent upon that fan base theory. Uh, so here is the backstory of the character that we are going to play. Once, your name was Konharik, the Warlord. You were the undisputed ruler of the Dragon Cult. All bowed to you. That was until the Betrayer took his three and fled to Solstein. You sent the Jailer to subdue him and succeeded. After the fall of Aldwin, all was okay. For a while. Then came the vision. Aldwin would return and instead of completing his destiny, he would instead seek to enslave the world again. On top of that, there will be an ancient clan of vampires who will seek to blot out the sun. And if that's not enough, Mirak is not as finished as you had come to believe. In the time since Adowin's fall, you have come to realize the mistakes that you have made. Sensing your rehabilitation, your fellow priests banded together and locked away your powers. They intended to take your place, but you had a few tricks up your sleeve. Taking on a new name, you started to formulate a plan. To fight these dangers that are coming, Skyrim will need magic. And you know just the place to, pre to prepare them. Not far from Sarthal, where is hidden an item with the highest concentration of magicka in all of Tamriel. You used your arcane might to build the College of Winterhold. And using the name of your birth, Shalador, you became the first Archmage. In your study, you came to realize that just the power of the college would not be enough. You need to gather more. However, this power that you need is not something that you can simply learn. You must be born with it. So going to the place where you were betrayed by your fellow priests, you created another structure. Somewhere where you could hide away in seclusion and figure out how to get the power needed. Labyrinthian. Finally, after years, you found the answer. A way to ensure your soul will be available to be put into the body of a dragonborn. You have done the math. There will be a dragonborn born with the dragon blood in, the f in a few hundred years, just before Adowin is due to return. Now you must prepare the magics. You will start fresh. You have to relearn everything. 
the fate of the world depends on it. So that's going to be kind of the backstory of the build for this, uh, for basically Shalador Reborn or Konharik Reborn. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the build uh, or get into the character creation. Creation. I honestly love the character creation of uh, Skyrim. I think that it is an, a very immersive. Uh, there are things that they probably could have done better, but I think they did an extremely good job. Uh, so, Shalador, the play style is going to be a little bit different than your standard um, uh, your standard uh, Archmage build. Uh, so, a lot of Archmage builds will go with a basically a pure mage, using only uh, magicka and staves, and using no heavy armor or weapons. Uh, that being said, I think that a dragon priest known as the Warlord would probably have known his way around armor and weapons. Like, he, he would not have been a purist, in a sense. Uh, so, this build is going to be kind of more focused, uh, centered on the battle mage style. Uh, so with that being said, we are going to run a, a more of a battle mage, um, uh, Give me a second, just kind of getting things prepped here. Kind of like the blue eyes on the Nord, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go play. We're gonna play this as a battle mage. Uh, he is gonna use the arc mage robes, uh, which is pretty much it was his creation. He's the one who who created the robes along with um, the College of Winterhold. So we will use the arc mage robes. We will have. Um, So I usually either go red or black here. And then I think a wizard should have a proper beard. Like this. We're going to go more of a younger guy. Like he's not like super, super young. Um, but we're going to go more with a... A younger he, he's basically the dragonborn but his soul like Shalador's soul has been placed in him I don't like those they make a statement Uh, so yeah, we're going to play this as a ba as a battle mage. So he's going to use heavy armor, he's going to use a one-handed sword, uh, and then he's going to use magicka and staves in the left hand. Uh, that being said, because he's not going to be able to utilize the full potential of uh, alteration, he will use flesh spells, but uh, sparingly. He's not going to he's not going to utilize them completely. Um, so we are going to name him. He's going to take on the name of the Warlord. You picked a bad time to come home to Skyrim, Kinsman. Captain, You're telling me. What should we do? He's not on the list. Forget the list. He goes to the block. By your orders, Captain. I'm sorry. At least you'll die here, in your homeland. Follow the Captain, prisoner. Stormcloak. There's a horse in Some the way. Here in Helgen call you a hero, but a hero doesn't use a power like the voice to murder his king and usurp his throne. You started this war, plunged Skyrim into chaos, <laughs> and now the Empire is going to put you down and restore the peace. What was that? It's not out of when it's coming. Carry on. Give them their last rites. As we commend your souls to Aetherius, 
blessings of the eight divines upon For the love of Talos, shut up and let's get this over with. No. As you wish. Come on! I haven't got all morning. My ancestors are smiling at me, Imperials. You say the same. The thought of this terrifies me. You Imperial bastard! Justice! Like, is that instant death, or do you realize that you're headless? Like, does your brain continue working for like, doesn't your brain continue working for like a couple minutes or something like that? Or a couple seconds that you realize that you're like, you're headless? That just seems terrifying to me. Okay, next. Next up, the Nord and the Rex. Come on. The horse is in the way. I might have to delete that horse. Oh. I forget what it is. Nope, can't be removed. Well, let's try this. Um. Oh, we gotta disable it. That didn't work. Does that work? No, it's stuck there. Okay, so the horse being there kind of sucks. Um. Give me one second, I'm going to pause this recording and then I'll be right back with you. Okay, we finally got it. It finally, the horse moved out just enough away that she was able to get it in the place that we needed. So we didn't actually have to use any commands or anything. Um, face the right, wait, person. This is why the unofficial patch is actually has some benefit to it. What do you see? So yeah, we're going to play this battle mage style using heavy armor um, because the Kone Herik, the Dragon Priest masks are either heavy or light armor depending on which mask you use. Uh, this is a completionist build. Um, so there is actually viable reasons to join every faction in the game uh, with this build. Uh, for example, um, there are Croesus, for example, the, the, um, the Dragon Priest who is a thief. Uh, has ties to the Thieves Guild, and you can find this in lore. Uh, so, therefore, it gives you, the, since you're going to have to track down all the Dragon Priest's masks, it makes sense. Join the Thieves Guild and see if you can hear any news about when Croesus was part of it. 
Uh, same goes for like the um, the companions. Uh, one of the I'm not sure exactly which one it was, whether it was Othar the Mad or one of the other ones. Uh, the dragon priests were involved with the companions, and so there is a connection there. So that would be a reason why to join the companions. Um, also. You could join the companions just for the sake of gaining the werewolf blood to see if that would be helpful for you uh, in taking on the uh, in taking on Alduin or the vampires or so on and so forth. So there's kind of a there, there's viability in every case of where you can go. I hate it when that happens. That's um, little things like that are are why the uh, why the unofficial patch becomes viable as much as it changes some of the things that I don't think it should it is it is absolutely helpful for those little things okay so role play wise you can really choose either one it doesn't matter we're gonna choose to go with Rayloff. Um, because we feel like a strong Skyrim is the most important part. And we would eventually be turned off by the by the Thalmar anyway. The fact the fact of Al Ancano trying to steal the the orb of Magnus or the eye of Magnus is going to put a bad taste in our mouth. Come here. Let me see if I can get those bindings off. All right. There you go. May as well take on your gear. We won't be needing it anymore. So a few things that we want to take care of first. Uh, so the first big thing that we want to look at is we want to make sure that we are playing on legendary difficulty. Why do we or why do you want to watch my let's play and here's the reason is because we play this game on legendary difficulty using um thou literally thousands of hours of whether it be watching people play this game whether it be someone like major slack who uh is an excellent guide for uh watching let's play material uh ver walkthroughs i love his material um but why would you watch me play versus Slack or Fevy? Uh, and really the, the reason I feel that, that the reason why you would watch me is because I produce my own little kind of uh, extra take using very similar resources that they do. Uh, Fevy is no not so much as a, he's more of a build guide, uh, like a legendary build guide, how to create the character as quickly as possible. Uh, whereas Major Slack does an, ex uh, he's uh, he's probably my biggest inspiration for this series, uh, or for any Let's Play series. Let's be honest, he's just an absolute wonder to listen to and watch him play the games. Um, and uh, I will be playing very similar style to how he plays. Uh, however, he knows even more knowledge about this game, whether it be like the alchemy aspect or or anything else than I do. Like he goes even even far and beyond. His his influence in the game is just so much. Uh, but yeah, we do play this game on legendary difficulty. Um, the other thing that we are going to want to do is to make sure that our dialogue subtitles, general subtitles, and our depth of field is all the way up. Now, with those being all the way up, those are set. There's one more thing that we want to set, and that is going to be uh, you come into the console commands here, go FOV uh, 90. I don't think there's a space there. Yes, there is. Okay, FOV 90. There we go. Uh, that gives us a little bit wider of a field of view. Uh, makes the game a little bit more comfortable for me. Gives us a little bit better vision all the way, all the way around. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and take all these, all right. grab the broom here. That broom is going to be extremely important la on. later on. Make sure everything's equipped. It is. Uh, we want to... Favorite, the axe. 
Oh, sorry, I've got the hiccups right now. Um, yeah, favorite the axe, and then we want. I, I'm just trying to reorient myself with the with the controls here. Uh, I can play this game on keyboard. I don't have to play it on uh, controller, uh, but I do like playing it on controller. Um, there is downsides to playing it on controller. So the first thing is is that you can't really hot. I mean, you can hotkey things. Uh, but it becomes awkward to try to uh, select the hotkeys um, on the keyboard if it doesn't. If, like, for example, when I have my controller plugged in, my keyboard does not want to work. Um, so you can do hotkeys with the controller, but you've only got two hotkeys. You've got one and two. Uh, so um, it just kind of becomes kind of annoying in that sense. Uh, that's really the only thing that I don't that I dislike about uh, playing on controller. Besides that, uh, controller is just a very, very much more comfortable for me to play with for these types of games. Okay, so we are gonna dive over here. We are playing on legendary difficulty, which means we take four times damage and we do point two or like point two five damage. So we do a quarter of our normal damage. So we want Rayloff to take their uh, aggro here so that they can focus him and not us. Uh, typically you want to use, you want to do what Major Slack calls a power start, uh, which is you, you, you are using only your one-handed weapon through this area. That will allow you to get at about three or two level ups. You're, you're able to leave Helgen at about level three with the other stuff like lock picking and everything else that you can get in this area. So we are gonna work on this here. We missed that swipe there. All right, so we're going to grab the key. We are now going to put on the heavy armor. Because we are a battle mage build, there is nothing wrong with us wearing heavy armor here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab all of this. Just kind of reorienting myself here with the, with the controls. All right, grab this other broom. You don't really need to grab that iron sword there. I do. I'll drop it later. And we got some gold in here. Alright, so I do plan on playing this on survival. So we are going to take these cabbage here. Because uh, food is, especially early, food is a very difficult commodity to come by if you're not playing uh, properly. Uh, now, survival does kind of hurt a little bit when it comes to actually playing a Let's Play. Uh, just because it doesn't record well, it doesn't... Um, it doesn't hold the visual well, or it, it, it makes it, it makes everything take longer is what I'm trying to say. So, let Rayloff take these guys. Uh, he's not moving, there we go. There go. Yep, they're gonna focus me. Okay, so easy way to get through this and make sure that they focus on Rayloff is to run past Rayloff and they will they will take into Rayloff as a target take him out take all of his stuff Take all his stuff. We'll uh, drop what we what we're looking to drop here um, once we become over encumbered. Grab the bread here. There is three potatoes in here. You want to grab those. Oh, 
drop the kettle because that is absolutely too much weight for no benefit. Uh, so we're going to grab the garlic and the frost mirum. You don't necessarily need these, but grab them. Um, alchemy is not going to be a, a big po point of this uh, playthrough, so we're not going to we're not going to focus alchemy at all. But we will have some. We will use it to some benefit because there, there's just a lot of gold to be had there. Alchemy is the most lucrative part of Skyrim. Like, you, you make more money off of alchemy than you do any other part of Sky Skyrim. Okay, we want Raylof to take aggro. We don't want these guys focusing us. We should be able to level up our one-handed here. It just depends on how quickly they're able to take out the assistant. There we go. There's a torture. Okay, so we got our first level up there. No, I haven't seen him since the dragon showed up. Grab the book. Grab the dagger. Grab the everything in that knapsack. Uh, back here, you can grab the shield if you wanted to play a, a sword and shield type, type character or a sword and board. You can also take the iron mace. We're not going to grab either of those because we just drop them again. Alright, so we've got, f I think it's five lock picking opportunities here, and you level up on the fourth one. Uh, or you level up your lock picking on the fourth one. So let's go ahead and get all, open up all these locked areas, get all that XP. There's two, grab the mage robes. Now we are going to put on the robes, but we're gonna, and the hood. Uh, but we're gonna keep wearing the the gloves and the boots. All right, so that's three done. This is number four. Gave us a uh, level up in lock picking. We'll go ahead and get a little bit more experience here. Uh, I do like the way that Skyrim deals with lock picking, and here's what I mean: um, if you are good at it, even at the low level that we're at right now, we could pick a master lock. Um, Starfield, however, makes it to where if you are if you don't have the perks in the lock picking, uh, then you cannot get to that or like you cannot pick that that level of lock at all. Like you don't even have the option to. Uh, so I like the way that Skyrim does it. Is is if you're good at it, you can utilize even like I could pick a master lock with this character if I if I would. If I'm good enough at lockpicking uh, right now, but in Starfield that wouldn't be—that's not even possible. We'll make sure these guys grab all the aggro here. There'll be there'll be one or two guys that'll run up the stairs here once they both get up here. Just one, okay. This is where we're going to get over encumbered. Right there. Probably should have waited to loot him. Because now we are moving very slow here. We're not going to be... Uh, let's go ahead and drop some of the items that we know we're going to drop. 
All four iron swords we're gonna drop. We'll keep the war hacks. Uh, drop the mace. All these iron weapons we don't need. There. We don't want to be okay. Oh, Owie. Grab all their stuff real fast. We are overweight, that's okay. We're just gonna grab all the things that we, from each of these guys. And then we'll drop down what we don't need, what we're not gonna carry with us. So the general rule of thumb here is that you basically want to hold a one gold for, or sorry, one weight for every 10 gold. That's the ratio that you want to hold to. Uh, so as long as you are holding to that ratio, in most cases, you're going to be so f rich in Skyrim by the time that you get to like level 10, 13, that it, it just doesn't even matter anymore. Um, so with that being said, Iron, Imperial Swords have a weight of 10 and a value of 23, so that's 1 to 2. That's We don't want that. Um, longbows, weight of 5, value of 30, which is not bad. That's one weight for 6 gold, but that's still not where we want. We will keep one of those longbows, though. Uh, in here, foot wraps gone, fur boots are gone, uh, the rough spun tunic is gone. Um, here is Imperial Boots is a big one that we're going to drop. Uh, and that gives us to where we are above the weight class. So we will go ahead and move on from there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a level up in, but I'm not going to place the perk point yet. We're going to hold on to that. Uh, we are going to put the point into Magicka. The reason why I did that is because I want to see where we are at, uh, how close we are to level three. Come on, this, let's see where this goes. All right, so we're gonna come around the side here. There is gold, a potion. And more gold. Sometimes there's bone meal here, there, or there too. Okay, so another thing to kind of point out: leveling up. So when it comes to level ups, you got to be very careful about where you place your focus. Destruction levels up extremely slowly in this game. Uh, so we could literally destruction our way through this entire dun or first kind of beginner dungeon, and we would be lucky to level up destruction even one time. Restoration actually levels up fairly quickly as long as you're do as long as you're taking damage and you're restoring it and not overdoing yourself, then you're fine with that. 
Uh, alteration, you don't have the chance to. Conjuration, you can if you're a Breton, but again, um, the wolves that you're summoning take too long for that to level up. Illusion, uh, you can if you're a high elf, but other than that, again, it's very difficult because you're just furying everybody and it's just not, it's not expedient. Uh, sneak, you can actually level up Sneak extremely quickly. Um, and then One-Handed and Archery, uh, you can level up fairly fast. So that's the reason why if we're going to get the most out of our start here, uh, we're going to make sure to do what we can to get to that level 3. We can get our Sneak attack, or our Sneak up really easily here by just Sneak attacking these guys with a bow and arrow that you've gotten. So let's get this guy here. And there we go. Now we are officially level 3 before we even got out of the cave, cave here. You do have to be careful uh, about just about everybody in this area because on legendary difficulty, these guys do hurt. Uh, and they can kill you very easily. So, you gotta be extremely careful about how you do this. But, we're, we're fairly practiced. We shouldn't put ourselves in, a, in too bad of a situation. The big thing that we really have to worry about is going to be the random encounters. Um, you don't always set yourself, you got to make sure that you're protecting yourself and that you're setting yourself up for that. Those random encounters can really catch you off guard if you're not careful. Grab these skeever tails here. Again, alchemy is not going to be a, pri uh, a primary focus, but if you don't pick this stuff up, you're just leaving. You're leaving so much gold on the table. This way. Slack would the, the slack would would really hurt me if he heard me say that because he knows he he's he knows how much these uh these alchemy ingredients are worth. Sneak by. Just take it nice and slow. We're overweight again, so we're gonna have to. Or if you're feeling lucky, you can take this bow. Might take her by surprise. Go ahead. I'll follow you. Watch your back. Okay, so we're gonna have to look at some stuff here. Let's drop the longbow. Uh, we we'll want to keep those iron daggers if we can. Alright, so light boots. These are two weight for 15 uh, value. Not worth it. There we go. Now, if you're wanting to be a purist and you're not wanting to use one-handed and... Um, not wanting to use uh, armor or anything like that. There is a way to be or to get through here and end up as a level three character before you leave this cave um, using only Magicka and Sneak. So you would sneak through all of that, getting all the points that you can get for sneaking. Uh, come up here to this bear, and then this bear is a weak bear, it's not a real bear. Um, it's a wounded bear, I guess is a way to say it. Uh, so you can let him do some damage to you and then just heal it up uh, and stay relatively safe. The only problem with this is, is that you take the chance of getting bone break fever, um, which is kind of annoying. But you can level up your restoration by sneaking through here, getting Rayloff to that side of this cave where he won't engage with the bear. 
come back, fight the bear for a couple seconds, and then just hit your healing and run away. And then go back up that hallway up there. He, he will not follow you back up that tunnel or hallway or whatever that is. Uh, so you could go up to the top of that, heal up, wait, a, uh, wait an hour, and then come back down and do it again and literally get yourself up to level 3 using Restoration and Stink. We're not worried about that. We got our level 3, let's go ahead and use it before we go to take on Survival. Uh, so that we have the, point, or the points that we have in. These first few points we're going to put into Magicka. It's very important that we get our Magicka up as high as we can. And we have officially made our way out. Uh, so yeah, we are going to go ahead and do this in survival. Even though it's not great for streaming uh, or uh, for recording, we still have it here. Um, so there's benefits and downfalls to using survival. And there's really just, it's, it's more fun. It's more roleplay centered. Uh, when you're playing on survival mode, you have to sleep, you have to eat, and you cannot, it, it lowers your carry weight by a bunch. And when I'm talking about a bunch, I'm talking about our carry weight is now dropped from the 300 that it normally is down to 150. That is a massive drop. Uh, and that's the reason why you got to be super careful about whether or not you want to play on survival mode or not, because it does hinder your gameplay a lot. So now we have to drop things that will bring our carry weight down to um, uh, 150. And this is where I, this is where, like I said, it's very important that you focus on. Uh, keeping to that one to five ratio or one to ten ratio uh, because these things are very heavy and if you want to maximize your carry weight to gold earning potential then you're going to want to be super aggressive about what you carry Let's see here. We can go ahead and learn that so we don't need that anymore. We want to keep the broom. Even though it's one to one, the brooms are very beneficial. We want to keep those. Keep the bear pelt. We're probably going to need it. Ingredients, food, potions. So really the only place that we have that we can slim down is going to be on our weapons and armor. So let's look here. The Imperial Light Armor. So the Studded Imperial Armor is extremely valuable. This is a 1 to 20 ratio. So you want to keep the Studded Armor uh, for uh, at all costs. <clears throat> Same goes for the Light Helmets. These are 2 to 35, so that's another, I mean, what? So 1 weight, 1 to 10, 1 to 10, and then, so it's a 1 to 17 ratio there. That's pretty big. Uh, 1 to 15 is pretty big. Now this one is only 1 to, it's about 1 to 10.5, or 10, yeah, 10.5 or 10.25. Uh, so we will drop here. Uh, until we are underweight, and there we go. There he goes. Looks like he's gone for good this time. No way to know if anyone else made it out alive. But this place All right, now I know Slack's going to be mad at me, but we're going to avoid or we're going to ignore most of the ingredients here. Uh, we are just going to pick up the ones that are going to be important for what we have on us. Uh, so we will grab these Blue Mountain Flower. We will grab the Mora Tapinalia. Grab one more Blue Mountain Flower. I think that's plenty there. Butterflies are great for health potions. 
our Tapinalia. I think we want... If I'm not mistaken, we want a couple Purple Mountain Flower. But we want to come up here first. So the reason why we're coming up here first is because there is a Falmore agent right here uh, who has guaranteed to have a an a, uh, enchanted piece of armor. <coughs> no. <coughs> this is a random enchantment. This one here boasts to 15% more damage. That's an insanely good enchantment for this guy to have. Um, we're also going to grab the Thalmor gloves and the Thalmor robes. Um, you want to grab enchanted armor if you get the chance. A, it sells for more, and B, uh, if you if you have the ability to, you can um, disenchant that armor uh, and gain the enchantment as well as learning uh, or as well as leveling your enchanting skill. Uh, that thing that just showed up there is just telling us that we're hungry. I did not mean to grab that sword. Uh, these guys sometimes have chump change. I would have grabbed the iron dagger there, but we're already fighting with our carry weight, so I don't want to add on more to it. Um, now, it's or the uh, the game tells us that we're hungry, so we need to eat something until we are satisfied or well fed. Uh, so, good thing is, is we have a few uh, random bits and pieces that we can eat here uh, that we don't absolutely need to keep on us. Uh, there is the two carrots too. I was hoping to get a well fed there, but satisfied is fine as well. Now, this guy, Talskar the Wanderer, this guy is a uh, speechcraft trainer. What was that sound? So he can help us out uh, and help us to learn speech. We don't need to do that at the moment. Uh, but him being here is actually kind of helpful for us. Because with him here, we can now possibly take these guys up here on. So we are going to grab their aggression here and run them into him. Oh, he's running away. So this is not good for us. Usually he will, there we go, he will engage. And if he engages, it's beneficial because... Oh shoot, I did not mean to attack him. Oops. Uh, he's probably going to go try to kill us as soon as we get done here. Oh, there's a wolf here too. That was bad. Okay. We could have done better. That's unfortunate. Okay, the other option here is to draw Rayloff into the fight. Um, so to do that, we would have to start the fight with them a little bit early. Uh, so instead of going all the way to take on, um, or uh, instead of going all the way to grab the Thalmor stuff first, you come over here, you start the fight with these guys, and then you run back to Rayloff. Now, the benefit of using Rayloff instead of Talskar is because Rayloff, if you accidentally hurt him, he's not going to attack you for it. Uh, so we can run up here. We are showing Peckish. Where are these guys at? Come on. I know you want to fight here. Oh, here's one of them. Uh, 
Uh, that, that's what we really wanted was a treasure map there. Okay, Rayloff is switching to a bow. Usually I think the archer is the one that has a treasure map, so... Where's the heavy armored guy? There he is, he's up there. He's stuck on... Ooh, grab the first shoes. I'll explain that to you later. If you want to, you can grab the heavy armor. Um, it's it's the same armor weight or the same armor level as what we're wearing with a lower value. Okay, so the main reason why we did that fight, uh, the why we wanted to force that fight, is because of this item right here, this treasure map. I'm going to show you where this is located. If you don't know, it's it's not a big deal. Uh, but it's right there, right next to uh, uh, Riverwood, which is where we are going anyway. Um, and then there is a secret hidden chest that is not there until you have that map or have had that map in your possession. Uh, standing by the fire, that gives us um, warmth which is part of the survival mod, uh, or the survival creation club content. Uh, also, you can sleep in the bedroll there. <clears throat> you could grab this book, but it's a one-handed training book. We want to save those until later. Uh, if we pick those up now, then when it comes to like level 99, and we're looking, we're looking around to try to to get a quick uh, level into our one-handed so that we can get it up to one, level 100, then we're not going to have that book available to us. So it's easier to just go ahead and save that for later. Alright, drop that. Uh, we got the boots, I don't think. Yeah, drop these, two of these. And there we go. And we've cleared them out and did not accidentally aggro Pascar this time. Uh, there's a wolf nearby. I'm not too worried about him. Uh, and this has changed now. So instead of the archery, we've got a helmet of minor alteration, which is actually arguably better for us. We are drained, so we are tired now, on top of being hungry. Now we are well fed. Okay. flower, one of the more Tapanalias. I don't think we need to grab a whole bunch of them. I've got to try to remember what the um, what the ingredients are like what ingredients are necessary for the power potions. Grab this hanging moss here, very important. And so, since we are playing as a um, a battle mage build, uh, we want to make sure that our casting is able to keep up with our um, warrior perks. So, like our one-handed. Let me go through this real fast. What, the perks that we're going to focus here. So, the main the main perks that we want to have are going to be. 
Uh, oh, come on. You want Destruction. This is going to be a, a primary perk. Conjuration will be a primary perk. Restoration will be a primary perk. Okay. Then you want uh, Heavy Armor as a secondary. One-handed as a secondary. And then uh, Smithing and Enchanting as secondaries. Now this is going, but this is going to be a fairly large perk spread, um, or fairly. There, there's a lot of skills here that we that we're going to have to work with, but we're not going to have to go crazy deep into some of these trees. Like for example, into the one-handed tree, there's going to be five, six, seven points that we're going to put into this tree, and that's it. Um, for the heavy armor tree, it's literally going to be these five, six, and yeah. So it's literally just going to be six points. And actually, we're not even going to worry about the wall fit. It's literally just going to be these five points that we're going to put into uh, heavy armor. Smithing we're just going to go up the heavy uh, armor tree side so it's going to be one two three four five six seven points into smithing enchanting is going to be five six seven eight points into enchanting Uh, restoration will probably be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points in total. Not too bad. And then destruction is probably going to be where we're going to put the majority of our points. Destruction and conjuration are we're going to be where we're going to be putting the majority of the points. Uh, so with that being said, that kind of gives you an idea of what we're looking at. Uh, right now, we've got two points to spend. I'm going to put one of those points into destruction, novice destruction, uh, which allows us to cast our novice destruction spells for half magicka. And I am going to put a point into uh, one-handed, which increases our one-handed damage by 20%. That will give us a good start here for this first uh, section. Um, real fast, we're going to go grab the most valuable item that you can get at this early stage and it's on the way to Riverwood. Now this item is strictly going to be for uh, selling. <laughs> Got some wolves over here. Do we think we can take them on? I am tired. I mean, I think we can take them on. Let's try it. Uh, let's quick save real fast and then we'll try it. That's one down. So what I'm doing there is I'm staggering my flame spell. The reason why you want to do that is because you can stack the burn effect from your flames. So if you stagger your flames like I was just doing, and literally just go like this, on legendary difficulty, this will allow you to melt through early game enemies uh, because you're stacking that burning effect and that burning effect does damage over time. Uh, so very, very valuable. Uh, up here, we are not gonna go in here, but we're just gonna do a quick flyby here for Anissa's cabin. Uh, we will probably go check that place out here eventually. Uh, that is the closest um, enchanting table that you can get to uh, before having to go all the way over to Whiterun. Uh, so since we will be doing some things over here in Riverwood, it's always good to have a place that we can disenchant our stuff. The problem is, is that if we do that, we're going to immediately draw the attention of Anise and she is going to want to kill us. 
uh, because there's some secrets that she has down there that she doesn't want anybody to know about. Uh, let's grab the fur bracers, even though it's going to put us over, because they will be useful to us later. Let's drop... Thaw more boots and thaw more gloves. We don't necessarily need those at the moment. So we've got a lot of things here um, that we can sell off and gain some coin. Uh, problem is, is that we want to maximize our coin gaining uh, amount. So first we're going to grab over here. And I was hoping that we would get lucky in here. Unfortunately, we did not. So what is... Our current gold is 217. That is enough, I think. Let's drop the steel dagger. We're not going to be doing any enchanting for a little while. I could probably drop the other daggers as well. Because by the time that we, yeah, because by the time that we get to, uh, we'll keep them for now. But by the time that we get to the point where we're going to use the daggers, we're going to have more than we than we know what to do with. All right, so we need to uh, increase our carry weight. There is only really one way to do that, um, and that is to have a backpack. Unfortunately, he does not have a corundium ingot, so that's unfortunate in the most extreme. Let's see if we can get lucky, and this guy over here would have one. Said no. Well, I don't know what you overheard. Some may call this junk. Me, I call them treasures. Yeah, so we are unlucky in the most extreme. Okay. I better get back to Neither of them have a corundium ingot, which is unfortunate. So oh we are we are running running weak. So one thing I don't like about uh, survival is that because your um, your health is not adjusting at all, it does not stay on the bar to show whether you're gaining. Um, that's impressive. Fully healed up here. Nobody else has come up the south road today, as far as I know. Okay, let's do that one instead. Nonsense. You and your friend are welcome to stay here as long as you need to. Let me worry about the Imperials. Any friend of Raylos is a friend of mine. 
New to Riverwood? Oh. If you're looking, here's the key to the house. Stay as long as you like. If there is anything else you need, just let me know. Okay, so she's going to give us some items here. We're going to go ahead and take what we can. Uh, you want to take the food. So I was kind of hoping that we would get lucky and get a corundium ingot. Um, unfortunately, we did not. With that being, now that we know that we're, we did not get the corundium ingot, we are going to have to sell here instead of holding on to the gear. I would have been able to make a book bag uh, and then head over. We might actually still get lucky. Uh, they may actually have a backpack in Girder's house, uh, which is a possibility. I've seen it happen a couple times. If that's the case, then we may still get lucky enough that we don't have to sell here right now. What I want is I want to get the maximum benefit that we can out of what we're going to sell uh, while still holding to the storyline. So I would have gone to either Solitude or to uh, Riften where I could grab the um, Amulet of Zenithar as well as the Blessing of Zenithar uh, and then been able to sell all of my stuff for more gold. Um, obviously if you want to maximize that you would want to join like join the thieves guild so that you can get the thieves guild hood um, which would give you even better prices uh, however we want to do that in line with the story so that we're not okay that's unfortunate let's try I over here Okay, they do have a book bag, however, it is marked as steel, so we cannot take it. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Alright, so we're, since we're already overweight, we're going to go ahead and just grab what we can that's not marked as steel. Make sure to grab those potatoes. Potatoes, cabbage, uh, leeks, and tomatoes are extremely important. You want to grab all of those that you find. These Nord meads and ales. The wine bottles. Wine not as is, is not as valuable, but grab it if you can. Grab a couple of these chicken eggs, these breads, lettuces, cheese. Oop, did not mean to grab that plate. Glad to help any way I can. <coughs> if you want to, if you want to maximize your weight carrying potential, then you only get as many potatoes and cabbages as you get tomatoes and leeks. Uh, tomatoes are actually the hardest one to come by. Uh, tomatoes and leeks. Leeks are um, extremely hard to come by, actually, compared to tomatoes. Tomatoes you f pick up in barrels um, and off of tables. Leeks, you can only really find them off of tables or uh, out of the ground. So if you don't find, uh, you don't really find them, at least not in, in my experience, in barrels as much. Um, So the reason why we're picking up those specific uh, food items is because they will help you by making a uh, food item called a vegetable soup, which is super easy to make. You literally just do cabbage, leek, potatoes, and tomatoes. So it doesn't take like salt pile or anything like that. Uh, and they provide a ton of uh, food source. It's like 
380 hunger uh, depletion, which is awesome. Uh, that's such a massive number. Um, and then if you're if you're lucky and you have a good supply of fire salts, then you can make hot vegetable soup, which is even better. Uh, because hot vegetable soup will help you to uh, get rid of coldness uh, or help you get through being cold. If you look at the top left of my screen there, you will see a snowflake. That snowflake is saying that it is cold outside and I am losing warmth. Um, now, as you progress, that warmth meter will go down lower and become a, a much bigger problem. So by having, uh, by staying warm and having things that will help keep you warm, uh, you will be able to get through that these cold environments a lot easier. Now, as you go north or even south, it's going to get super, super, uh, the warmth is going to be a big problem. Which is why we picked up the, um, from around here. Got the Riverwood door. Trader. Take a look. Which is why we picked up the fur armor that we did. Because it's very valuable into helping us. Let's see here. We can buy one. But if he doesn't have a mage backpack, then it's not worth it. Doesn't look like he does. Okay. Really wish he would have had an a, had a Karandia Mingan. Okay, so we're gonna go through and sell our stuff here. Uh, we'll sell the iron daggers because we don't necessarily need them just yet. Keep the black mage robes. Keep the fur armor. Keep any enchanted gear, basically. Let's see here. Keep those. We don't necessarily need the frostbite venom. Uh, keep, or we can sell the Alto wine. Keep this black, bri black briar mead. That's going to be helpful later on. Uh, keep at least one hunting brew mead. We can sell all the rest. Keep the ingredients. Uh, we can sell both of those. <coughs> you can sell this flawless emerald and this garnet. I don't know where I picked up the garnet from. Uh oh. Sorry. Oh, no. There we go. I uh, don't know where I picked the garnet up from. Sell the wooden plate because we don't need that. Keep the bear pelt, the sabre cat pelt, and the wolf pelt. That's good enough for here. That drops our carry weight down to 83. Alright, um, options. So the first thing we want to do is we want to sleep. So let's go here to Hod and Gerder's house. <coughs> Grab a quick nap. Technically, probably want to sleep until business hours, because we're going to need to grab some help for this next portion. And we want to make sure who we can grab is, is available to us. Uh, so there we go. Keep your eyes open. Let's grab these ingredients here. Specifically, you want the garlic. Bread. Make yourself at home. <laughs> Food wise, we're pretty much set for a little while. We got a lot of help any way I can. We got a lot of things here. Um So you can go ahead and search these barrels if you want and try to find like if you get lucky you might find tomatoes like I just did. 
Um, you don't have to. If you're playing on with the unofficial Skyrim patch, you will not be able to take those without it being marked as steel. Uh, so you got to be definitely be careful about that. Uh, but so, besides that, though, uh, if you are not playing with the unofficial Skyrim patch, you can go ahead and grab what's in these barrels for free, and they're not going to say anything about it. Grab the leaks over here. Okay, so we kind of want to match your leeks, cabbage, and potatoes with how many tomatoes you have. So we have four. We've got so many to put to or potatoes. We don't need that many. Cabbage. We'll keep there. And that way you're not just overly stacked on. <coughs> Excuse me. And that way you're just not overly stacked on how many um, tomatoes you have. Or how, ma how many food ingredients you have. You're not from around here. Come in here, go back to the vegetable soup. And there you go. Those vegetable soups will be I came here from the what you want to use to keep yourself with food. Uh, next person we're going to find is Fandal. Actually, next thing we're going to do is make up some power potions. We've already depleted his gold store, so that's going to be, it's, we won't be able to sell these right away, but. Orgnar. Orgnar, are you listening? Hard not to. Okay, so we Hail want, we need to get a new badge. I believe it's, Can you hear me? yep, ale's going bad. I guess you don't have potatoes in your ears after all. Just make sure we get a fresh batch in soon. Give me one second. Let me look this up. I actually think I might have this. Give me one second. Okay, so I found my list. Uh, so what I did is, um, this was actually a year and a half ago, two years ago, I bought Major Slack's Guide to Making Skyrim Easy. Um, helped you build uh, a uh, tank mage... Uh, Dark Elf build was really awesome. 150 pages, or 159 pages of just uh, just pure Skyrim material. Uh, and one of the things that he goes over is the best potions to kind of make early on. Uh, so with what we have here, we can make a couple of the power potions that he talks about. Uh, so the first one that we want to make is Bear Claws. Um, I believe it's Bear Claws, Chicken's Egg, and, let me see here, I'm not seeing, the spider, it's not, I don't think it's Spider's Egg. Okay, so I know Blue Mountain Flower, Hanging Moss, and uh, you know what? Let's do let's do a quick save before we do any of these. Unfortunately, I could not find the ones where he talks about uh, just after getting out of Halkin. So let's do Bone Meal Chicken Egg. There we go. That's one right there. Then blue mountain flower, chicken's egg, hanging moss. Uh, blue mountain flower, chicken's egg, and rock warbler eggs. Make a couple of those. Uh, then you want to do.
think it's bone meal, more tapenalia. Is it salt pile? Nope. <laughs> That's okay. We got a couple potions. Um, and these are potions strictly for the point of selling. So like this one here, decrease the target's mag magicka regen for 100% for 22 seconds. This one actually is not a bad poison. Um, this one here, however, it decreases the target's magical regeneration by 100% for 22 seconds, but their health is increased by 17 points for 60 seconds. <laughs> You're never going to use that. <clears throat> uh, this one decreases the target's magical rege regeneration by 100%, restore their health 22 points. So th these three potions here are strictly to get value uh, and gain coin. Uh, so with these three potions, you should be able to uh, get enough coin to at least set you guys up for right around 1,500 gold. Ish. River, my sister can take a look. He only has 30 gold left, uh, and that's because we sold everything to him. Normally, you would want to split it, uh, sell the things that you can to Alvor first. And then come over, talk to him, and sell what you can sell to him. That's all right. We're going to hold on to this anyway, and we will find a viable, someone viable to sell it to a little bit later. Now I'm looking for Feindal. Uh Why I'm looking for Feindal is because we're going to need help for this next little bit. Um... Oh, there he is. Uh, and Fandol makes a quick and easy follower that you can grab. Just ask him what his problem is with Sven. He's going to give you a letter that you can go take to Camilla, uh, or Camilla Valerius. There's one of two ways you can handle this. You can give her the letter and say it's from Fandol, uh, in which case you would be able to go grab... Um, uh, Sven and make him your uh, companion or you can tell her and lie and say that the letter's from Sven and then you can get Feindal as your uh, companion. Feindal in my opinion is much more useful for Sven however if you're not going to use Feindal as a companion then you want to choose Sven because Sven has a plethora of garlic uh, in his house that you can take with you after you do this. I'm right behind you. Uh, I need to trade some things with you. We're gonna grab the key. And we're gonna run over to his house real fast. Uh, yeah, so Sven has a ton of garlic inside his house. Uh, and if you befriend, befriend him instead of Feindal, you'll be able to have access to all of that garlic, which is massive, because uh, garlic is used in one of the most expensive potions in the game. So we're going to grab our food here that we can, that we really want to take. Grab the Frost Murum, the garlic, the elves here. Uh, grab the wine bottles. Not necessarily worried about any of those. We'll grab that. We'll grab the two Sabre pelts. Nothing in there worth taking. Grab some more elves here up here. These elves here are actually fairly valuable. You can mix those with the spider eggs that you got from Helgen Keep and make fortify archery potions. Uh, which are very beneficial if you're playing like a stealth archer type build. As well as Feindal being very helpful for a stealth archer because he can level you up uh, or he can train you in archery. Um, so if you give him gold he will up your archery per or up your experience in archery. And then if you have him as a follower then you can just search his inventory and take that gold back. Uh, that's another thing that's considered technically a glitch or an exploit. Uh, you're not supposed to be able to do that, supposedly. So uh, the 
um, the uh, the Skyrim patch, the unofficial Skyrim patch, does take that away. Now, if you really, really, really want to um, jump your character's experience and level up, as well as his gold, your gold intake, uh, then you're gonna want to go over to. Oh, these guys are hurting. These guys are hurting. I might not survive this. Thankfully, we have some health potions. I think I saw that I contracted something. I'm not sure, though. Where'd he go? Oh, Fane already took him out. He's probably somewhere down over here. Well done. Okay. So, what I was saying. <clears throat> if you really, really, really want to jump forward your build... Uh, and you don't mind over leveling yourself, you can kill these jumping salmon with fire, um, with fire magic, uh, and they will come down there and then you will be able to pick up something called salmon row. Uh, you mix salmon row with Nordic barnacle and garlic, and you have got the most expensive potion or, uh, that you can make in the game. I am, however, gonna go ahead and do some of this. Uh, I'm not going to go crazy with it because I don't want to overlevel my character. But there is a lot of gold you can get for doing this. And so, kind of just focus the flame on the ones that are jumping. And as you can see, they drop down here and they drop Salmon Row. We want eight Salmon Row. That's what we're looking for here. Because there is an easy place to get eight barnacles. Or eight Nordic barnacle. If you do this right, there is an opportunity to get 12 salmon row from here. missing some, so see if anybody made it down farther than I don't see anybody so let's see where we're at we're at seven. Oh, there is one up there will I be able to get it is the problem It. Yeah, I should have been able to get yep, there it is. All right. <clears throat> now we've got nine salmon row, which will lead to a an extremely expensive, very powerful potion uh, that will un it will level us up a lot, but it will give us a lot of gold, which is what we need. All right, so that's not what we needed Feindal for. What we needed Feindal for, where did Feindal go? There he is. Is going to be up this way. So remember what I was talking about in survival mode. I know I'm kind of hopping around a lot, guys. It's, there's a lot to go into. Uh, but if you remember what I was talking about in survival mode, in survival mode, you have the chance to become, like, extremely cold. Um, 
So if you look at this armor, if you look at the bottom left corner there where it talks about the stats of this armor, it says this armor provides 54 warmth. This is actually one of the highest ratings, that you, it is the highest rating you can get amongst armor for warmth. 54 is, is the absolute max out of an armor piece. Just like 24 is a max out of out of a uh, out of a gloves piece, and 24 is a max out of a boots piece. Now, other armor types can provide you with that that level of warmth. Like for example, these Thalmor robes will provide you with a 54 warmth. However, there is no headpiece for these, so that you can't gain the the piece for your head, or you can't gain the warmth for your head as you have for, um, you could for like this piece here. Um, so like this one here, it's got 18, which is low for a help, for a headpiece. But same with these robes, these robes only provide 27 warmth. So having, if you're playing on survival mode, having a set of fur armor, uh, extremely valuable. I cannot explain how valuable that will be because this will help to keep you warm in those colder climates, which is all over the place. You find them everywhere. So I highly recommend having at least one set of fur armor on you at all times. Uh, it does have a little bit of weight to it. Let's see here, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's eight, nine pounds uh, of your total 150, and that's not including the, the headpiece, which is gonna give you another like, uh, two pounds, so that's like 11 pounds of 150. Uh, but it's the value that it gives you there is extremely high. So I do recommend at least having one set of fur armor, uh, or I, at least as as long as you have one set of fur armor, the survival ability or the ability of survival will be a lot easier in this game. Uh, now. We're coming in here, we are not going to go all the way through this cave. We probably could, uh, but we want to just grab one thing in particular here uh, in the beginning part of this uh, cave. Let's try not to die doing it. is gonna help us, oh, we died. <laughs> I said try not to die, and then I died. <laughs> now, there is a spell that you can pick up that will make this cave a lot easier, and it actually will allow you to do this cave uh, single er, as a single player. You don't even have to have a follower for that part, and that is a Fury spell. Uh, the Fury spell will allow these guys to fight each other, uh, which will... These guys do not have your limitations on Legendary difficulty. They are doing the full amount of their damage um, instead of the gimp damage that you do, which is why a follower is so big in uh, legendary difficulty is because your followers do the maximum amount of damage that they can do, uh, where it, it, the legendary difficulty only affects you. Ooh, that's big. We'll take that. That was an upgrade. So here is the other type of fur armor. There's multiple types of fur armor. This one only provides a 17 warmth. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you're grabbing the one that does the, gives you the maximum, which is a 54. Uh, as for our weapons, we just got an upgrade. We now have a steel war ax, which only does, gives you one more damage but versus an iron, it's still better. Uh, but this is what we really came in here for, this pickaxe here. We want that. Also, you could you could go ahead and pick up these Fly Amanita in here because these make for a fairly easy power potion that you can get the ingredients for uh, super quick and not have to do anything crazy for. So go ahead and grab these Fly Amanita you'll be able to make those into a potion fairly easily. It is uh, Fly Manita, Morapat Tapinalia, and Dragon Tongue. 
Uh, now, there isn't really a good source, uh, like a super good source of Dragon's Tongue um, around Hel or around this area, around Riverwood. However, there is a lot of more Tapinalia around here, so you can definitely grab those. And there is three, two or three Dragon's Tongue in um, White Run that you can grab, which will, you can turn those into the potions that you need. So like I said, we're not going to focus alchemy. That's not that's not our goal here. Uh, but we will use it for giving us some... Giving us some early levels as well as early gold. That's a big important part is the early gold. Okay. So we want to come back up here... The reason why I wanted to get that pickaxe is because we are going to come up through here and we're going to grab ourselves some corundium ore. You do that, you come up to the left side of that tree stump there, follow it all the way up here and there is going to be some corundium ore ingots. This is the easiest way to get free corundium, uh, or well, second easiest. The easiest way to get free corundium is to get it from that chest that we were looking at. Did I not go far enough? No, I don't think I've gone far enough. I think it's up over here. <coughs> uh, the easiest way to get the free corundium is to get it from the chest that we were looking at. Uh, oh, no, no, wait. I think I went too far. Yeah, I went too far. Should be right up here. Did I miss it? Did I miss a... Okay. Run up the side of that tree over here. Yep, there it is, right there. I knew it was up here. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so this gives us Corundia more, uh, which is necessary to craft our backpack that we want to craft. Uh, so we'll grab, you only really need to grab one vein of this. I don't know why it stopped halfway. And you really could just stop right there. Uh, you don't need to grab these other two veins, but there is two veins up here as well. If you wanted to get some corundium ore as well as some um, some pieces for like some steel ingots or whatever. <clears throat> While we're up here, let's go ahead and grab... How many flamenita do we have? We have four, so let's just go ahead and grab one, two, three, grab that death nightshade. Did we use, yeah, we did use a one. So we'll grab one more on our way to uh, back to Riverwood. Now the problem is, is we won't be able to turn these corundium ores into corundium ingots until we get to White Run, uh, which is fine. We're getting ready to head in that direction anyway. Um, but that is a good little piece of advice to kind of get you ready if you're not if you're unlucky enough that there wasn't a corundium ingot um, in the chest up there, which sometimes there can be. And if you were unlucky enough that there wasn't a Corundium ingot available with one of the traders um, or one of the shops in here in Riverwood. So now we've got f four Fly Amanita, four Mora Tapinalia. Um, we have some potions that we can sell off and we have enough Corundium ore to make a Corundium ingot. 
with all that being said, we are ready to make our way towards uh, White Run. <clears throat> our very first goal is we uh, for this character is we want to unlock shouts. So we are going to go through, progress through the main storyline until we have killed our first dragon and we have unlocked our uh, unrelenting force shouts. That will allow dragons to be able to spawn into the world uh, where we will be able to fight them for the first time and then for every time after that. Um, <clears throat> once we have finished that, then we are going to move on to the College of Winterhold. Uh, we want to prepare ourselves to fight Alduin, and we are not fighting Alduin until we have the Konharik Mask. Same goes for Mirik, and same goes for Harkin. Uh, so, to do so, we need to be able to fight dragons and get all of the... Er, and fight all the dragon priests, which are a pain to fight. I am not kidding. They are nasty, horrible things to fight. Uh, and the first one that we are going to fight is most likely going to end up being... Um, Either Croesus, we may try to take him on, uh, but I kind of want to focus more, like, I kind of want to keep this lore friendly, so I don't want to take on Croesus until after we have joined the Thieves Guild and basically pretend like we have heard story of a Dragon Priest that was attached to the Thieves Guild. Um, same goes for the one like the 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 dragon priest i'll have to look it up the dragon priest that has connections to uh the companions uh, i don't want to take him on until i have gone through the companions quests uh until like right before or r right as we are getting sent to deal with the glenmory coven as uh, where i will typically try to uh, add in the okay now we can go face the dragon priest involved with the companions or at least we've heard of the dragon priest involved with the companions we may not face him right then and there uh, I don't have any yes we, we're gonna pick up some hanging moss so we'll grab a couple lavender while we're on our way down uh, lavender and blue mountain flower That'll give us some quick gold, and we'll be able to buy some early spells to kind of help us through these early points in the game. Uh, another lavender. They're fighting a giant over here, so let's go help out. Uh, let's hit F5 just in case we accidentally enter combat with one of them. you're not careful and you accidentally aim it and hit one of them, then they will all target you and just beat you senseless. So you gotta be careful about that. Ow. That was either Feindal or A uh, Ayala. Outsider, eh? An order of warriors. And we show up to solve problems if the coin is good enough. Not for me to say. The old man's got if you go to him. So I'm gonna say the way that I'm gonna play this is he's he's gonna join the companions with a with the goal of seeing if they would be able to help him defeat Alduin. Um but uh, while he's there, he learns of the connection to one of the dragon priests, or learns of the dragon priest, one of the dragon priests' connections to the companions, uh, and then goes to seek that person, uh, that dragon priest out once he finds out. Um, the other side that we can play that is, as far as lore goes, is that he already knows of the dragon priests and their connections so he's joining the companions to be able to 
learn of where that uh, dragon priest is located. Um, so the companions are able to help him pinpoint the location of that dragon priest. So there, there's multiple ways that you can play that out, that you can that you can make the lore work uh, with your character. Okay, five tomatoes, we've got two potatoes, we've got 14 leeks, we've got two cabbages. Okay, so now we've got six potatoes, four tomatoes, that's fine. And we'll grab a couple of these cabbages here. Cabbages are easy enough to come by. So we'll grab four of those. I think we have only three hanging moss now, or we've only got three lavender now. Uh, three or four, we're only gonna, oh, there's another four tomatoes. We're only gonna pick up um, two hanging moss, so there's no need to go crazy with that. Uh, um, we should have eight tomatoes now, eight cabbages. We need two more potatoes. I'm sure we'll find two more potatoes in these one of these barrels up here. Eat all the horses' apples. No more. Oh, there we go. I knew we'd find potatoes. Okay. <laughs> uh, we can go ahead and sell our potions to these guys out here. Do you seek to make a purchase? Take a look. And there we go. Oh, we can sell the potion of true shot. We don't need that. Uh, we'll keep the potion of health. Don't need that. Don't need that. Like I said, you can get very easily um, you can very easily get in between 12 and 1500 gold uh, before you even reach White Run. It doesn't take a lot of effort there. And your gold value will increase exponentially if you do the right things in these cities. Hold. <clears throat> cities close with the dragons about. Official business only. Fine. But we'll be keeping an eye on you. I was wondering if that was going to give me the speech level up. Alright, so the very first thing we want to do in here is to smelt the corundium ingots. Corundum ingots. Uh, and then we need to turn into leather. I don't think you need leather strips. Let me double check. No, we don't need leather strips. Um, the one that we want is the mage backpack. The reason why you want the mage backpack is it's, it does give you the 75 point uh, carrying capacity, but it also gives you the increased magicka by 20 points. Uh, so that is very beneficial to us. 
anything that increases our magicka is chef's kiss. And now, instead of a 150 carry capacity, we now have a 225. And then our magicka is increased by basically we're increasing it right now with all, everything we have is plus 50. That's 30 for the novice hood, and then um, 20 for the backpack. Now the reason why it's running a little low right now is because we need to sleep. Uh, that being said, we've got a couple more things that I want to grab before we sleep real fast. Once we sleep, we'll get the well-rested bonus. Uh, which we're going to use to actually, uh, before we do this, but we got some things we want to grab before that. Mainly those two points of hanging moss and the eight Nordic barnacle that are in this area here. So one, two, Three. Make sure you don't drown yourself. Four. Five. Six. Seven. I'm missing one. Right there. Eight. So that gives you eight Nordic Barnacle, mix that with the nine Salmon Row that we have, and the seven Garlic, Almost, er, and we will have eight Garlic here soon. In fact, you'll have the opportunity to have more than eight Garlic here soon. Um, let's talk to Lucia here. Give her a coin. This gives us the Gift of Charity. The Gift of Charity is a an extremely effective bonus that gives us Fortified Persuasion and increases our Speechcraft by 10 points for one hour. That's massive because you mix that with being able to... Uh, uh, it allows... The upgrade in Speechcraft allows you to sell things for more expensive. I heard him boasting at the bannered man. If you want to try, go right ahead. I don't think anything. Okay, so we're gonna come up here and talk to Mikhail. Come on, I've got a and tell him to leave to Carlotta Valentina alone. Yeah, if it's a lady you're looking for, you Carlotta put you up to this, didn't she? <sighs> you're right. On my honor, I won't bother Carlotta ever. If it's again. work you need, how can I help? This gives us a little bit more gold. Gives us 250. Okay, we'll sleep till tomorrow at around 8 a.m. Grab the point, we will put that in, we're going to continue to put into Magicka. And as for the perk points, uh, you can put it into a couple of places. S putting it in heavy armor this early on doesn't do us any good. Um, it, we're, our armor is just so low, our armor, our armor chance is so low that there's no point in putting perks into it until we are higher up in levels. One-handed though, very beneficial to put these points into. That gives us one-handed weapons do an extra 20% more damage than what we have now uh, for a grand total of 40. You can also put it into destruction or conjuration uh, to increase your um, you're casting how much you can cast these either of these two. We don't have enough levels in destruction to put any more points into destruction, so I'm going to put it in conjuration to make novice conjuration spells cost half magicka.
They say there's nothing a Nord woman can't. All right, so what are we looking at? We've got 1,700 gold. That's nothing fairly close to where we need to be. Let me guess. Someone stole your sweet roll. We also have the well rested bonus, and we are going to gain a bunch of experience, uh, alchemy experience here with these eight potions that we're going to be able to make. But before we do that, we need to do just one more thing. Two more, technically. So, first, we are going to talk to Farangar. It seems this damnable conflict has claimed And ask him, are you the only I wizard in Whiterun? Yes. Ah, that reminds, would you be so kind as to deliver the frost? This yes. gives you, For basically, it allows you to... I have news from Hogan uh, about the dragon attack. The guard let you in. Come on then, the Jarl will want to speak to you personally. Okay, so he's going to make you do a, like a little running quest where you take these frost salts to Arcadia. Uh, it gives you another little bit of gold, uh, another 250 gold, which is valuable. So, you were at Helgen. You saw this dragon with your own eyes? I did. Dragon destroyed Helgen, and last I saw it was heading this way. What do you say now? Continue to trust in the strength of our walls against the dragon? My lord, we should send troops to Riverwood at once. It's in the most immediate danger. But the Jarl of Falkland is lurking in the mountains. That is a provocation. He would assume we're preparing to join okay, Alfred's side here. and if attack him. Should be able to. Nope, we're not able to grab, grab that stuff out yet. Irelet, send a detachment to Riverwood at once. Yes, my yard. If you'll excuse me, <laughs> I'll return to my duties. That would be best. Well done. You sought me out on your own initiative. You've done White Run a service, and I won't forget it. Here, take this as a small token of my esteem. There is another thing you could do for me. Suitable for someone of your particular talents? Come, let's go find Faringar, my court wizard. I serve your okay. for looking into a matter related to this. So in here we want to grab the garlic. So like I said, you can actually get a bunch of garlic in here. That's three, and then there's another three up here. So that's another six garlic uh, that you can grab. We only needed one, but we'll grab the tomatoes. The cabbage. We have plenty of leeks. 15 tomatoes. 11 cabbage. 15 leek. Fourteen, fifteen potatoes. We need one more cabbage, which sometimes you can find down here. I guess you can't get in there. There it is. And there we go, 15 of each. Uh, you can also go ahead and grab the food here if you wanted to. If you've got, um, if you've got salt piles to make that worth it, you can grab those. Grab the frost Miriam and the elves ear. You can grab the um, garlic if you want to. We only need one more. There is other power potions that you can make out of garlic. Okay, so we're going to make these vegetable soups here. 
venison chop, the salmon steaks, mammoth steak, horse haunch, cooked book brook brat bass. We don't need the dog meat. I think I found someone who can help you with your dragon project. Go ahead and fill him in with all the details. So the Earl thinks you can be of use to me. Oh yes, he must be referring to my research into the dragon. Yes, I could use someone to fetch something for me. Well, when I say fetch, I really mean delve into a dangerous ruin in search of an ancient stone tablet that may or may not actually be there. Ah, no mere brute mercenary, but a thinker, perhaps even a scholar. You see, when the stories of dragons began to circulate, many... D One sure mark of a fool is to dismiss anything that falls outside his experience as being... But I began to search for information about dragons. Where had they gone all those years ago? And where were they coming from? I, uh, learned of a certain stone tablet said to be housed in Bleak Falls Barrow. A dragon stone said to contain a map of dragon go to bleak falls barrow find this tablet no doubt interred in the main chamber and bring it to me simplicity itself it's never that simple Off to bleak all right falls so barrow. a few things that we want to do Gone. here Not a patient man. we are going to disenchant the black mage robes the reason why you don't want to disenchant the novice robes is because the novice robes are more expensive they both have the same enchantment, so if you disenchant the black mage robes, you learn the enchantments that's on the novice mage ro or the novice robes, but you manage to keep these to be able to sell later. Uh, then you want to disenchant the hide helmet of minor alteration and the hooded thalmor robes. Helps to level up our enchanting to level 20. Then come over here to the alchemy lab. This is where things are going to get fun. So we've got a few power potions that we can make here that's going to jump our alchemy level by a lot. Don't do this if you're afraid of legendary difficulty, okay? I'm telling you, this this is scary, okay? So hit blue uh, mountain flower, hanging moss, lavender. Not too, not too bad. A fairly expensive potion, but not crazy. Here's the big one, though. Garlic, Nordic, bar Nordic Barnacle, Salmon Row. These eight potions, we are currently at alchemy level 17. These will level us up. And there you go. Now let's do Blue Mountain Flower, Lavender, Rock Warbler Egg. And then I did forget to grab the Dragon's Tongue, which is okay. So our alchemy jumped up many, many, many levels there. What We were at level 17 in alchemy, we're now at level 29. That's 12 levels. But the reason why we did that is because so we want to be able to now. increase our gold output. Uh, we need lots and lots of gold for what we're going to be buying. Um, so like I said, if legendary difficulty scares you, don't do that. Um, because we just jumped our total gold value by a bunch. So now we need to sell these potions off, which are, which is another thing that's going to be fun. Uh, the best way to do that is to first go to Arcadia's Cauldron. I did forget to grab the Dragon Tongue, which are right out here in front of Arcadia's Cauldron. One, two, three. Grab the Nightshade as well. Those will be beneficial for us later on. Go ahead and make up the, that potion as well. 
Dragon's Tongue, Flamanita, more Tapanalia. Okay. Now, first thing you want to do is talk to her and tell her that you have Frost Thoughts for her. Splendid, splendid. Oh, but I suppose you expect some compensation. Um, here, these potions should suffice. Okay, now we can offer to sell to her. She's got 505 gold. Uh, we've got well more than 505 gold worth of potions. So let's sell... Um, let's sell these ones first. You want to sell the most weight value for uh, gold. So these potions are all 0.5 but we would only be able to sell her one water breathing potion. So we're going to sell her a bunch of these that we can uh, because it will give us, it will allow us to give her more weight or allow us to release more weight. And there we go. We have used up Come all of her gold. Come over here. We can sell to Bellathor's general goods. Sure, you'll find what you're looking for. Everything. Some may call this junk. Me, I call them treasure. He's got a little bit more gold to work with. Still not a crazy amount, and we still have these potions here that we can sell. But we are now up to about 3,000 gold. Let's see if he has anything of value to us. Mm. The Vagrant Robes of Minor Conjuring is kind of cool, but besides that, there's nothing else really here. Nothing here that screams, I've got to have that. Do come back. Okay, so now there is two things that you could do. You could either wait for 48 hours and, and, and reset both of their inventories. You could realize that there's only really uh, one, two, three and a half pounds of... Uh, weight here that's not been used so you don't really need it so depending it's depending on what you need if you need the gold necessary um, then you can wait the 48 hours sell to them again uh, and then do that over and over again until your inventory is clear uh, do that if you've got a lot of stuff in your inventory and you oh I didn't realize we still have had some stuff that we do need to sell um, do that if you have a lot of stuff in your inventory and you don't want to keep holding on to it. Um, that is a that is a viable option, uh, or you can just hold on to it and and sell it next time. Either way is really it's it's up to you what you want to do there. But I don't think we need any more gold right at the moment. We are we are fairly well set. Uh, for the things that we need to buy. So you wish to master the arcane art. So this guy, he has a lot of good things. First of all, novice robes of restoration. Not very. You typically don't want to buy robes unless they're of a depth level or higher. Um, or ex. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. A depth level or higher. A depth expert and master. Um, now these ones, these double robes that are part of the Arcane Robes uh, Creation Club content, they're nice, uh, but they're not super necessary. Now if they had, if this one was like, a, if they had a Destruction and Conjuration robe set, you'd take that in a heartbeat, grab it, go, run. Like, just take it and run. Um, but not for this particular build, it's not super necessary. Uh, the spells that we are going to pick up right now are we want Bound Sword, 
the reason why we want Bound Sword, even though we're, we're going to be using physical weapons later on, is because A, it gives us the most, it can give us the most amount of damage uh, for a weapon that we can receive this early. Um, also, it gives us the most experience across any other Conjuration spell that we could pick up besides uh, Ray Zombie. This Ray Zombie spell here uh, gives you the most amount of experience for Magicka used. However, we are you can you can make an argument that Necromancy fits into the build because maybe he maybe Shalador had to use Necromatic ma Magic to uh, hold his soul in stasis until he was able to get it into the Dragonborn. So you can make the argument that this kind of fits the character. Um, I, however, am not going to make that argument. So anyway, Bound Sword, that's the first one that you want, that you absolutely want to grab. Um, you can grab Conjure Flame Atronach. Um, we'll see what we, what we're with, what we're left over with after everything else. Elemental Flare. Uh, Fury. Uh, Oak Flesh. And we've got enough gold left over. Let's go ahead and grab the Frost Edge, or the Fire Atronach. So those books, these these spells here are, are fairly important. The, the Flame Atronach's not super necessary at this level, uh, but you can go ahead and grab it. So the reason why we chose these spells is to increase our, poten or our damage potential as well as our survivability. Okay. So like I was saying, the bound sword here, and thankfully I still have an axe on me, so this works very well. So summon this bound sword. It uses a decent amount of magicka, but not a crazy amount. There are benefits to using a bound sword over a physical weapon. First of all, the bound sword is lighter. You're able to swing this thing so much faster than you would the uh, physical weapon because it doesn't weigh anything. On top of that, the Bound Sword does the same amount of damage that the Steel War Axe does, except for it swings faster. Okay. It also uses less uh, stamina to power attack with the Bound Sword. So the DPS potential of the Bound Sword is much higher. And see, it uses uh, like half of the total of stamina that the War Axe does. Secondly, this Bound Sword is not its completed form. Once you put a spell into... Or once you put a perk point into Mystic Binding, the amount of damage, base damage, that the Bound Sword does is equal to that of a Daedric Sword, which is one of the strongest weapons, one of the strongest base damage weapons in the game, uh, only beat out by a dragon sword. Uh, and it weighs a heck of a lot less than a Daedric sword or dragon sword does. Uh, so, now, that being said, once you get your smithing and everything leveled up and there's there's all the relevant perks and everything the dragon sword the dragon bone sword is going to is going to beat out the bound sword by a long shot uh, but until you get to that point you want to use that bound sword uh next thing that we grabbed is elemental flare so you see this is the flame spell this is the elemental flare spell all right, does a lot more damage, uses a lot more magicka, but it also does the explosive damage to be able to damage everything around it, okay? 
so that's a reason why we picked that one up. This is very hard to use on a dragon, okay? Uh, this, much easier to hit a dragon with. Uh, and then finally, oh, Fury, not finally. We've got Fury and Oak Flesh. Uh, right now, because we are wearing robes, um, we can only, oh, I need to start using the right keys. So our current armor rating is 22. And the reason why our armor rating is, is at 22 is because we get 11 armor from our Imperial Bracers and 11 armor from our Imperial Boots. Now, the Oak Flesh spell gives us an extra 20 armor. Um, actually, sorry, extra 40 armor. So now we are at 62 armor, which is a massive boost for us. Now, obviously, if we weren't wearing heavy armor, we didn't plan on wearing heavy armor, then we could perk into um, mage armor here, which allows protective spells like stone flesh are twice as strong if not wearing armor. You can actually get that up to three times as strong. Uh, that being said, with that, uh, with the three times as strong, the highest ranking spell, Ebony Flash, would only give us 300 armor if we have all three perks into Mage Armor. That is abysmal, considering the, the, the absolute cap is like 565. Uh, so not it's it's very much not necessary. We can get the maximum cap uh, with using the with having a dragon bone boots, dragon bone bracers, and the conharic mask, as well as the ebony flesh spell without having the mage armor perk, and we will be able to hit the cap, which is why we are not going to be putting perks into. Um, sorry, I've got these darn Japanese beetles are everywhere um, which is why we don't have or which is why we're going to be using um, heavy armor instead of using the oak flesh spell and be a purist the other one fury this is going to be super helpful if we get into a tight situation uh, the fury spell will allow it allow uh, make NPCs fight each other as long as they're all below a certain level Right now we are le at level four. We are going to be level five, maybe level six once we get this, or once we get our level up. Um, the fury level spell, or the fury spell, is up to level six. So enemies up to level six. Now the enemies of Skyrim scale with you, uh, so we w shouldn't fight anybody above level at level four. We shouldn't fight very many people that are above level six. Um, you may have a couple, but not very many. So the Fury spell will help us in the long run be able to take on those situations. See, we got two levels there. Uh, we'll be able to help us take on those situations a little bit easier because if we get surrounded by a bunch of enemies, if we get, for example, hired thugs sent after us, which is very or which is very possible to happen, um, then having that uh, fury spell to make them attack each other and fight for you uh, is a beneficial outcome. I think I want, yeah, I think I want to hold on to that perk point because we're going to end up using it on Mystic Binding here soon. It's five levels to get up to Mystic Binding and Conjuration. We'll be able to hit that really quickly. Um, what else? There was one more. Oh, Conjure, or the, uh, Conjure Flame Atronach. So we still have Feindall with us, and he's going to be useful for us for a little while longer. Uh, but we are able to conjure this guy, or this lady, uh, and she is able to fight with us for a uh, time, or for a limited amount of time as well. So the reason why I go with the conjured flame Atronach at the moment is because we're going to be fighting a dragon here soon. 
and it's benef more beneficial to have the flame atronach because she has a ranged attack of the fireball to be able to send at the dragon and she's very actually she hits them more often than not so that's the reason why we go with the flame atronach to help us through also we're going to be fighting a bunch of undead here soon uh, so the flame atronach will help us get through all of that with that being said we need to drop off a bunch of our weight before we go take on this fight we really don't need those ingredients much anymore uh, so let's see here. We don't need the pickaxe anymore for the time being. We'll keep these because we definitely will need those. We can sell that. We are definitely going to want a wood axe, which we can get over in Riverwood. We got some foodstuffs. We can drop off the brooms because we're not going to need those yet. Grundamore we're not going to need yet. Leather, we don't need that many, but I do want to take at least three with us. There we go. Carry weight at 86, which is fairly respectable. And we'll actually drop that a little bit lower. Because we'll keep the Steel War Axe for now. Uh, just because in case we run out of magicka we won't we we want to be Don't able to have a weapon uh, food let's go ahead and eat we are well fed all right and we just woke up so we are no not tired all right so that's where we're gonna end for today to, on the next video we are going to take on bleak Falls Barrow the reason why we need the axe and why we have the leather on us is because when we stop by Riverwood over here, Bleak Falls Barrel is up here in the snowy mountain range. Um, this is a very difficult area to get to in survival, because, especially at low level, because you are not um, really geared to handle uh, the snowy weather. Now, there is one thing that we can go grab that will make that a little bit easier, and it's at the very beginning of a cave, or, uh, yeah, of a cave right here. Uh, so we are going to go jump over there. It's like right there-ish. Uh, we're going to go jump over there and grab that real fast. Um, we don't need to clear out the whole cave. We just need to get through that first beginning area, grab what we need there. And then we can head back to Riverwood. Um, but the reason why we need the axe is, and the leather is because we can make camping supplies. Camping supplies will allow us to build a fire somewhere up in here, or build a camp somewhere up in here where we are able to um, rest next to a fire and gain warmth back. That way, if we need to, we have it available for us. If we don't, we can save it for when we go when we climb this mountain, which we will need it up there, or when we go up here to Winterhold. Uh, we'll probably need something in between Winterhold and Windhelm, but that's not for right now. So the next video, we are going to go over here. We're going to complete uh, Bleak Falls Barrow. Uh, and then we are going to fight the dragon, which will be somewhere right over in here. So, yeah, that's what we're looking up into. Uh, if you guys are enjoying the content, please leave a like and subscribe so you can see when I post more videos. I'm not sure I'm going to post this one as often as I did on the Starfield videos, because the Starfield videos I went through really quickly. Uh, posted a video a day. Um, I don't want. I don't necessarily want to do that with this one. We're going to take our time uh, and make sure that we are in fully enjoying what we can do with this game. So thank you so much. Hope you're enjoying the content. Like and subscribe. Support the channel, and I will see you again on the next one.